Hey guys, welcome to the first part of our enemy designer series. Um, in this series, we're going to look at how we can get a enemy character uh, to move left and right. And as you can see here, as he's moving left, uh, there's a value up here that uh, changes and that causes him to shift left and right. So let's look at the code of, of how we do that. Okay. Um, what you'll need to do, uh, let me maybe just clear up a few things here. Uh, before you maybe begin, uh, you'll want to check that uh, you have a stage that is uh, long enough. You can have the peon on the starting screen or off the starting screen like I have. Um, and just a few reminders, if you want to make the screen bigger, uh, go into properties and increase the width of your tiles. The default value is normally 20. And so what I did was I doubled that value and so I stretched my screen by double the amount and also you'll want to make sure that your character has this camera follow uh, behavior and you can do that under here called add behavior uh, and then you can do a search for camera follow camera okay and then you'll find that or you can just do a little browse through here and uh, there it is right there uh, camera follow and you can just click on that choose it and then add it you don't need to change any values here Okay, so uh, in our coding part, uh, and I'm just going to remove this guy here. I'm going to do this with you guys uh, together. Uh, once you get one enemy peon created, uh, you can duplicate that character. And I'm just going to double click on it and I'm going to rename it first to enemy peon 2. two. And Right now, he's, uh, ooh, hold on, let's rename that first, okay? So he, it actually comes with all the code from the previous character. So what's going on is, I'll maybe just move down here first, okay? Just a little reminder, a refresher here. Uh, if you move your mouse around, you'll see that the X and Y coordinate values are changing. And um, what we're trying to interested in is uh, we, we're interested in the, uh, minimum and the maximum values that this enemy character is going to move between. So there should be a left boundary or a lower boundary, and there should be a right boundary or an upper boundary. Okay, And that's because the X value increases towards the right, and so that's why the numbers are bigger, uh, or, or an upper boundary, or there's a, uh, of course, the X value decreases, and so there's a lower boundary on the left. So just move your mouse around where you want your character to move. Okay. And so I roughly determined that I want my character to stop at 1,000 and an upper value of 1,200, okay? You can use more uh, refined values, but I prefer to just use big round values in the tutorial. And so that's why the lower value, if the X coordinate of my character, of myself, is less than 1,000, or if the X coordinate is over 1,200, Okay, and likewise, if it's less than that, it moves right. If it's more than that, it moves left. Okay, and the likewise, the same code is down here. Um, if the direction is left, we change the speed. And so the speed is what actually causes the character to move, not the variable. But the variable helps us direct uh, the flow of our program. And so if it's left, the speed is negative. If the direction is right, the speed is positive. Okay, so that, those actual values, negative value causes the character to move left, positive speed value uh, causes the character to move right. Right, so what we'll need to do is we'll just actually need to replace all of these um, attributes. So the overall skeleton is the same. We're just gonna replace these attributes with uh, a new set. And so each time you create uh, a character, P on to direction, you'll need to create a new uh, direction variable or attribute. I'm going to start this one off uh, with an initial value of right, just to be a little bit different. Okay, and actually I have this uh, attribute created already. And so you can always create a third one, a fourth one, and so on. And so um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a setter here first. Okay, so we're going to grab two setters. And as you recall, if it's less than 1,000, or some value, we're gonna tell it to move right. Okay, and if it's more than some maximum value, it's gonna move left. So I'm just gonna trash these ones first. 
and then I'm going to go over to getters. So now we want to get the value. We want to check is that value that we changed here, is it left or is it right? Okay, so now that that's set up, that this is actually ready to go peon number, for peon number two, except of course these uh, minimum and maximum values are the same as enemy peon number one. Okay, so if I go over to my game and let's put enemy peon two, I think this is gonna be peon two, I can't see the whole name here. If I put enemy peon two here, and uh, I'll find out very shortly when I test this game, so that looks like about 900 maximum. Eight, nine, yeah, okay. And over here, it looks like about 700. Okay, so you can use 700, 900 for enemy peon number two. Let's change that. Lower value, 700. Maximum value, 900. Okay, so let's test that out. And so I, I can actually get the game to show two of these different variables to show up here. Uh, if you guys are interested, I will show you this at the end of the tutorial, but uh, it's not necessary for getting your game to work. Okay, so I have one. Oh, he's not changing. So that might actually be enemy PN number one that I put there. Let me check over here with the enemy design there now. Okay, let's see here. Uh, that is enemy PN two. No, that's enemy PN two. Oh, okay. That's interesting. What exactly are you? Let's see here. Oh, okay. That is enemy peon 2. So 700, 900. Two direction, two direction. One is one. Okay. Um, let's see. That should be correct. I might just rename this peon 2. This shouldn't really affect it. Let's just double check what's going on here. So he's gone to an upper value, but he's not moving back. So PN2 direction is left. Left should direct him there. Okay, let's just try this out one more time. Hmm. So the maximum value might be a little bit too much. Let me just double check in this game here. Okay, so the maximum value might be too high. Uh, so I'm just going to lower that to maybe 850. And uh, you'll kind of have to experiment with this a little bit yourself uh, when it's your turn to to test your game out. And so you, you have to experiment with values that are slightly bigger, slightly smaller. Um, you know, play around with it until you get it working. Let's see here, I stand in the middle. Okay, and watching both my characters. Okay, yeah, so they are moving left and right. So what was going on? Why he was um, why he wasn't responding properly was um, over here, uh, he was actually running into the block. He wasn't able to reach the X corner of 900 because the block was in his way. So um, I know it sounds a little bit strange, but you do need to... Um, it's the main reference point for where the character is. So you have to kind of play around a little bit with the values. Um, the game likes to, um, let me just maybe pull up one of these characters here. The game likes to reference all characters are drawn within a rectangular shape. And so the game actually references the top left corner of that. Okay. But of course, uh, he's a lot bigger than that. So um, there's a lot of different things. There's a lot of physics you might say going on and so what happened was uh, when this enemy peon uh, was over here he wasn't able to that top left corner because he was running to the block he wasn't able to reach that maximum value so that's why I had to make it a little bit smaller and I could probably do with like 880 and that would probably still work um, anyways you guys can mess around with that a little bit and but I recommend using smaller values until you get it working and then slowly increase it until it fits exactly right. Okay, uh, some of you guys might be curious about how I got this left and right going. And so uh, that's under add event. And so I'll just add one more here. Uh, it's when drawing. And over here, it's under drawing. And we want to draw text. Okay. And again, you give it an X and Y coordinate. And you get 
use the 